Hello everyone, I'm Diana and welcome back to BASE for our second episode. Who have we got? We have a slightly different setup today. We are physically missing one piece to our puzzle Sad. and that is our right hand man, insert him here. He's like there. My other half, Sebastian aka Australian Strength Coach. He's on the other side of the world in Columbus, Ohio with our very, very special guest. So we are going to be Skyping him in today. Hey, Bass. Hey, girl. Hi. Hello. We miss you. you. I miss you. <laughs> it's been like three days. Can you guys like guess four. who he's with? <laughs> All right. We are sure you guessed it. It is, it is <laughs> our champion friend and Bass's strongest athlete, the one and only... Half Thor Bjornsson. Welcome to the show, Thor. Thank you so much, guys. It's such an honor to be your second guest. No, you're well, our first guest. You're our first guest. So, wow. I'm so honored and I'm so happy. Oh, we wouldn't Thanks have it any you. other way. Seriously, we are so excited. Firstly, we want to say the biggest congratulations to you for winning the Arnold and for Bass, of course, for coaching you. Great work, guys. You did it. So good. So exciting. Congrats, Thor. Thank you, guys. Congrats, congrats Thor. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, of course, we need to say a big congratulations to the amazing woman behind the big man or right next to the big man, his beautiful <laughs> wife and my close friend, you guys, Kelsey. That is so, so cute. cute. Stop. <laughs> congrats, Kels. <laughs> they just yeah, kissed. <laughs> Get a room, guys. Oh, that is so cute. Hi. So good to see you on here too. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. I know it's quite late for you so anyway we'll be fine we're so sad that we couldn't be there with you guys Aww. well the last episode we concluded by saying that we were going to come to ohio but yeah. like literally three hours before we were ho about to hop on that flight they announced that the arnold's were cancelled well at least that there was no spectators but they kept going back and forth they were saying spectators could watch and then they were saying they couldn't so we were devastated yeah. but we we obviously had to send bass <laughs> so <laughs> He took yeah. one for the team. He's there. <laughs> but we're so sad that we couldn't be there with you guys. So here we are, Base Body Babes in Sydney, Australia. And you guys, Sebastian, Thor, Kelsey and Team Iceland are in Ohio. Team Iceland. Yeah. Team Thor. Well, although we're, I'm on the other side of the world, I did not want to miss the opportunity to have um, definitely my number one athlete, um, a huge influence in where I am today in my career. Um, 2016, I met Hafthor. Since then, we've been working together and my life has changed so much. Um, it just wouldn't feel right to have any other guests on our first episode. So although we're apart, I just didn't want to miss this opportunity. Um, I would have preferred that it was face to face, but we're just going to make do with what we've got. And we're here Skyping you guys. So we're going to make it work. So good. Yeah, you know, this is working out really, really well. So why didn't you guys fill us in on everything that we've missed? How did the comp play out over the last two days? Well, let's go straight to the spoiler alert. Spoiler Pass alert. One. In a row, congratulations. Yay, yeah, congrats, Thor. It was a great contest overall. I had some, I had some good fight against Martin Shkielkowski. He came in ready. He came in strong. Um, he actually won four events out of six. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was very impressive. But what took him down was his, de was his deadlift. Uh, what, what made me the champion was how consistent I was throughout the competition. I placed, the lowest place I placed was fourth. Uh, and then it was just like third, second, and first. So, so um, being consistent in, 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 in this sport and having no weaknesses is the key to be the champ. And to be honest, I feel like I don't have any weaknesses, and that's why I've been able to win so many shows back to back. It's amazing. Uh, absolutely it's agree. So with amazing. Thor, were you going into this competition? Were you confident that you were going to win? You know what? Yes, I was confident, and that's. I want to say that's something that builds with experience, you know. I've been competing now for a decade in Crazy. my sport. And every year that passes, I feel like I get more confident. And then what helps as well is the team I have behind me. I know that I have, you know, the best, best coach in the world. I have the best nutrition coach. I have the best wire. I have such an amazing support system that, that gives me the extra... Um, 
extra, you know, kick of the knee. That you know, I I just believe that there's no way I, I can lose. And you know, the preparation went so well. I, I prepped for this contest. Uh, I, I started 17 weeks out, and we just made sure that you know I trained everything super well. We made sure I trained the shield tempo twice a week, twice a week for 17 weeks. Um, and you know, I just had no weaknesses. I just came in ready. I performed the way I usually perform, and I won. Yeah. So the way that I see it, um, I mean, Hafthor keeps saying 17 weeks preparation. Uh, he's got a pretty good base to start with, as we all know. Like he's a really strong guy. He's a very well-rounded athlete. But yeah, 17 weeks is when we're given notice of the events that we actually have uh, in this competition. It was six events, and that was deadlift. Uh, we all know that that's right now. Thor's absolutely the best deadlifter on the planet. There is no question. So that's his event, and we knew that was going to be his event. But we had a lot of incentive to to really, really work his strengths with that. So that really always takes priority in your programming. But something that was unusual about this one that I saw from the coach's perspective is one of the events, uh, as you said, the sheer dumbbell. Um, the dumbbell weight was world record and that's what they expected the athletes to be able to achieve was world record which was absolutely crazy um just so you know the world record at the time uh i think it's 145 kilograms it was just set for the sheer dumbbell mm -hmm. and uh anyway so they expect these athletes the arnold is the strongest it's known as the heaviest of the strongman competitions in the world out of all the major competitions so we got World's Strongest Man, Europe's Strongest Man. The Arnold's is the one with the heaviest event. So the ones that stood out to me was deadlift, let's prioritize the hell out of that. Uh, Sir Dumbbell, let's prioritize the hell out of that. So something that I noticed uh, with when I saw Hafthor getting off the airplane was actually his shoulders looked about this wide. <laughs> Crazy. Um, every time I see it, it's like I can't believe my eyes. I can't believe how big this guy actually is. So, um, you know, you guys have seen all the photos of us together and I look puny. Um, <laughs> Kelsey of, looks Kelsey very puny. <laughs> uh, the whole world has seen the memes of you guys. I'm not going to get into how uh, the memes go, but... It's, yeah, every time, know, every time we've Skyped and we've just all um, FaceTimed and I've seen Thor and his head's just so big and his shoulders are so big. It's like, okay, you're ready. You are ready. So, yeah, so the sheer dumbbell was... Uh, that was kind of a new event. Like we've never really trained that way for your upper body as much. Yeah, it hadn't been in any of this, the, my contest now for a while. So I haven't trained it in, in you know, a few years. So that's, you know, a, that's a very technical event. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I have the strength, I have the, you know, strict power. I just had to really focus on that event to get the technique right, and just get comfortable with that, with that heavy, heavy weight, you know. I'm, I'm going to go straight to the end of the show. That's the <laughs> event that you pitched the show on. Uh, that was the last event. And, man, oh, I posted it on social media. You can hear my reaction behind the scenes watching it on television. Um, we came in with a plan, and that was just to win the event, to win the Arnold's. Uh, he was the last man to go, so we knew exactly what he needed to do to win the show, and that was to press 280 pounds, and that's all they needed to do. So, of wow. course, I'm always nervous. I'm always confident. I know how strong and able Thor is, but, uh, you know, something about me, I'm always nervous. You know, I'm just that kind of guy. And anyway, he came in, picked up the 280-kilo dumbbell, and he won the Arnold. Insane. And we thought, okay, that's it. Then he proceeds to the next dumbbell, which of course he didn't need to do, which was 300 pounds. I don't know what that is in kilograms. It's 136 kilograms. 136 kilograms, and only one of the other, uh, two of the other athletes had done that. So he picked it up, no problem. That was just, he was just being a show. So after he did the 300 pounds, uh, he, he'd won it. We knew he'd won it. He could have walked off with his head high and his arms up in the air. And then he points to the biggest one on the stage, which no one had done. It's like, what the f <laughs> and picked it up with ease and he just he was in control of this uh, oh. long story short he missed it just by the lockout we all thought he was going to get it and and what was really cool about this event is we were backstage 
and the other competitors and their coaches were, were cheering Thor on. Like, they were yeah. so excited by this whole oh, thing. Good. It was just a sick way to finish the show. Yeah. It was so cool. Kelsey, <laughs> how did you feel? I bet you're so happy that this is one comp down for the year. Yeah, I feel relieved now. Yes. At this event, I was shaking. I was yeah. like, shaking. Oh, I, I but feel you. So okay. It won, but now he's up there making a statement. So how many different events are there? Six. And what, what so, else? So the first event that we started with was a new event called Trial by Stone. Mm-hmm. That's, that's uh, five stones total. Mm-hmm. We have to press two stones overhead. Uh, then there's two stones that have to load up to a platform. Then we run to the Hussel Stone replica that, that the Rogue Fitness made. And we have to run with that 15 meters. It's a timed event. We have to, like, the fastest time that's able to finish all the five stones, wins. Martin Kukowski won that event, I played second. The next event was a bash for bar event that I'm super good at, mm-hmm. best in the world, best in the world. <laughs> I won, won that, that event, got 10 points. Um, third event of that day was the Wheel of Pain. Mm-hmm. That I sounds to, horrible. <laughs> I, I, came, I came third in that that event, that's a, that's, a, that's a massive equipment that, that, that Rogue Fitness, one of my sponsors, made for this show. It's just wow. incredible. Wow. The most unique, beautiful equipment that, 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 that Strongman has ever seen is, is awesome for sure. How it's good. awesome. Day two, so that, was, that, that was day, day one. one. Yep. Day one. We finished day one in second place by half a point. Yeah. yeah. So now we go to day two. Day two, we start with the elephant bar deadlift. Yes. And I won that event. Amazing. I, I won it with, for sure, we should talk about I, that. I won it with a little bit over a thousand pounds pull. I only had, I only needed to do uh, two pulls to win that event. But, so that was, that was actually super. Um, convenient for me because I was able to um, not spend as much energy like the other guys that were maybe um, they had to do three lifts, went to failure and when you go to failure you know, this is on the, the, the bass, make sure that I never do in training because you want to you, you wanna, you wanna leave the failure to the competition. Because failing in competition is going to fatigue you so much more you never really want to want 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 to fail because that's gonna not if you don't have to not 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 if you don't have to because that's gonna make you like hit the wall, at least in my opinion, and I think you agree with me. Absolutely. Um, the next event after that was the frame carry up a ramp. Mm-hmm. Uh, new frames, a new ramp, two actually two frames, brand new wooden frames that 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 rogue. Fitness had made for this competition and a brand new two ramps that we actually have to run with these uh, beautiful 400 kilogram uh, frames. Yep. I have a ramp that is roughly, if I remember right, nine meters. Right. Yeah. Something, like, something like that, nine meters. First time swing. I actually, that, that, that was my poorest performance of the whole competition. I placed fourth there. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, the last event, yep. the Shirokan goal. So, so after that, um, so let's go back to the deadlift. You won that by a mile. Yeah. And and that put him in such a lead that even though he came fourth in the frame, he came into the last show first place in the, uh, with by three and a half points. Wow. Which is why we knew we, all we needed to do was come fourth in that whole event to win the whole show. Right. So that was the dumbbell. Yeah. So I, I was going in the double with three and a half points leads, which is super, super good in my opinion. Well, because I, like I in like I don't have weaknesses in this sport. Um, I can always place in my opinion like top three. The worst thing is like I don't know fourth. If it's a mistake made, if it's a mis- mistake made, made you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I felt super comfortable, and I knew that I had worked super. Super hard on the super tempo. I actually had a, a, a mate, a 150 kilogram dumbbell, um, 
my I had a friend of mine make that t- so I could train train with that in my own gym. Right. You know, just like a replica of the exactly the shirt number. So I got that. I trained with it a couple of times, but it actually came out to weigh 146 kilograms. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to lock that out in training, but I, I, I was able to like clean it a couple of times. I gave it a few tries. It's just like it's something with the temple. You, know, you, you have it here. It's like it's the tricep power that usually like fills me, like the end, you know, just the lockout, you know. But I was very comfortable going to that. Okay, second, won the show. Amazing. Two, ten, ten. Insane. So which one was your favorite event? Probably that, the shirt sure symbol. Yeah, like, right. I don't know. Like, you love a yeah. challenge. Yeah. I just like, why that event? It was just like, that attempt with the 330-pound symbol was just like, so that's 150 kilograms. It was just so amazing to me. Like I was, I even though I felt the dumbbell, I was just, I was so happy because I was so close. Yeah, right. I'll tell you what, especially happy. It's like it's an event that Kilius Koski actually holds the world record for, mm-hmm. but it's nothing really that you've actually trained to attempt the world record ever. Yeah. And actually, it's the first time we focused on it. And Kilius Koski got the 320. You didn't even attend the 320, but I think you'd have got it. Yeah. You were that close with the 330. You know, it was all about the showmanship at the end and putting on a good performance. So you just skipped the 320. You didn't want to draw with Kiliakowski, straight to the biggest one. And and something that I love about that is a lot of the times in strongman competition, they choose events that none of the athletes have really done before. And it's like, okay, well, we don't know how good we're going to do it. So we train the hell out of it. And he ends up, top two always, or even first place Mm -hmm. with new events, which just goes to show when everyone has the same amount of time to train for the same event, Thor wins. Thor's the strongest man in the world currently. You are. Yes, you You are. are. (laughs) That was was definitely my favourite as well, the Sears Dumbbell. We just want to ask one more question. Which one were you the most nervous for Hmm. leading up into comp? Probably, to be honest, Probably the trial by stone Mm -hmm. because it was a new event. It was the first event. And um, the stones were kind of awkward. They were small. It's super easy to make a mistake with with those stones. Um, So I was quite nervous going into that event because I had like no idea how it performed or even if I would make any mistakes. Mm -hmm. I kind of like going into that event, I decided to take my time with the first natural stones. So I went into that, I, I made sure to take you know good time with them and walk it out. I was able to finish them both without doing any mistake and then I finished the rest of the course, you know, good. And I was happy with my performance, played second right behind Matthew Shvinkovsky. But yeah, that was for sure for me, the most nervous. Okay. So, so uh, with with that performance, you were third, which isn't always the best. It's always the best to be later on or the last lifter. So you can see what all of the other athletes do. And that's the advantage that Kilius Koski had. Thor was the only other lifter to actually finish it. And, well, he was the first lifter to finish all of the stones. And Kilius Koski was able to learn from the way that Thor did it and see exactly how fast he needed to move. Yeah, right. Um, if the tables had turned and Thor was able to see how Kilius Koski moved, um, it, it always happens. Thor was able to perform and do what he needs to do to get the job done. Being the first, the instructions, I was screaming it out as well. Take your time, take your time. And it was a good game plan and I wouldn't have changed it anyway. No, either. And on that note of game plan, did it all go to plan? Like, how were you guys feeling while you were in it? Bass, you're the coach. I'll tell you, the first disaster that didn't go to plan was that they cancelled the entire show. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> but that drained a lot of energy. Uh, every hour, these guys are receiving updates of whether the show's on or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The anxiety. So much uncertainty. Like, He's trying to just focus on the show and then he's given news that it might not even be on and then, and then it's on but his family's not allowed to watch or now they are and it's, 
that's that's probably um, the, you know the most uh, it caused the most anxiety out of out of everything else. But um, you know, you guys talk about nerves and, and everything with Thor, and I know it's uh, better for him to speak on his own behalf. But from what I see, he comes in ready, and that takes away so much anxiety. We trained every event really, really well, uh, and it just goes a, a long way with confidence to the whole show. Being yeah, prepared, yeah. Hey? I have to agree, agree with you on, on that, Bass. You know, that was for sure. No wrecking, you know, especially because, like, I had 18 people with me, and I, I like, I don't want to disappoint them. They disappoint them. They already came all this way from Iceland, you from Australia. Um, <laughs> and my, my whole brain team as well. You know, there's a lot of people here coming to support me. So, a lot of pressure on you. A lot of pressure. Obviously. I, 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 yeah. I didn't want to let them down. Of course, I didn't want, want them to stay at the hotel. It was the show here. Uh, so it was like, yeah, definitely was nerve-wracking. Yeah. Obviously, having an amazing support system is an important part of your success. You always have your beautiful wife by your side helping you everywhere you go. I am <laughs> lucky enough to be such a close friend of Kelsey and I see how amazing she is with you. She's the best wifey and I claim to be the best wife <laughs> as well. So we are both great wives. I said you're just pumping the tires. No, you're amazing. You are amazing. So can you just tell us who came from Iceland? Who didn't we see? Your mom, your dad, which Team Iceland members came? Yeah, so... Yeah, my mom and dad came, my, my, my grandfather, grandma, my older sister, her fiance, my sister's son, uh, and Some then boys. Uh, like a lot of guys, guys from the gym, boys, yeah. you know, good friends, all, all, all of the best, you know, guys, you know, Andrew Ray, you know him, you know, he's yes. a great guy. With me. That's amazing. He, he, he was the one that came. To World Songs Band back in 2011, my first competition, and almost been to every single contest since then. Imagine that. You have like the biggest wow. supporters. Not only are you just so popular and your fans adore you, but your family and friends absolutely adore you. And it's so nice to always see them there supporting you. It always warms my heart. It's so lovely. It's so cute. I think there are 17 people. 17. Wow. Yeah, um, I'm super grateful. I'm and like, they I are can... the loudest cheer squad <laughs> I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Peter, Peter, oh, he's the best. Hello, That's hello. so. He's so good. And your grandparents, my... Thor. Your grandparents are so loud. They are the best. You I can, loved watching them. You can them. <laughs> see why you are the man that you are. You just have so, like so much passion from the Icelandic people. It's so good to watch. Right. So can you just tell us, yeah. so in the end, spectators were allowed to watch and did it affect so, your performance at all or you were just like ready to go? Honestly, I was told that only coaches and family members were allowed, but then... There was a lot of athletes. All of the sporting events were still going. So there were a lot of athletes in the area, and I'm pretty sure it was all athletes. Was it only athletes? Watching. Yeah, but, there were, but I think some of the athletes, the other athletes' family and Their friends Their family as well. and friends yeah. were there too. So yeah. there, there would have been maybe a thousand people in the entire stadium. Yeah. Yeah, so there was probably, still a crowd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was better than what we were expecting, right. for sure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so why don't we talk about what's next for you? So that's the is that the first competition for the year down for twenty twenty? That's the yeah. first competition of the year. What have we got coming up? First place. Next coming up for me is another competition in five weeks. Uh, wow! The World Ultimate Strongman in Bahrain, eleventh of April. So I'll go home now. I'll start my preparation. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be messing my coats. Where's my program? Where's my program? Where's my program? <laughs> oh, send it now. You know, I'm just kidding. I'm just, te I'm just teasing him. He's always yeah. ready for you, yeah. Thor. He's more ready for uh, you than he is ready for me at all times. Anyways, so that's a huge competition. And I, I'm i going to deadlift 501 kilograms. Yes, there you, you are. are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a deadlift bar, in a suit, deadlift suit, um, figure eight straps, 
So I'm excited. I'm ready. You know. So that's that W-U-S. Awesome. W-U-S. And then after that, we go so to? I think I should just give a little bit of perspective for this. A lot of talk has gone behind this 501 kilogram deadlift. Um, actually, at this show, the Arnold's, and a lot of people are asking. Um, it's funny. A lot of people understand that there is a difference between the deadlift bar. There's different circumstances where you can use a suit and different straps, and there's multiple different world records. And there was an actual prize money uh, of $101,000 to deadlift uh, 501 kilograms at this event. But the circumstances were extremely different at this Arnold's. And the main determining factor, the reason why we didn't attempt the 501 kilograms deadlift now is because it was on the second day. The first day, there were three really, really challenging and uh, fatiguing events. So he came to attempt 501 kilograms in a fatigued state. And it was our decision not to risk injury, uh, especially when there is an even bigger deadlift goal, and that is to achieve the ultimate world record. The current world record is 500 kilograms on a deadlift bar. So we don't want any uh, black asterisks above our name saying, yeah, we did 501, but it was on an elephant bar. We're going to compare apples with apples under the same rules, the same circumstances with the same equipment, and we're going to once and for all uh, break that record and show that Hathor is the best deadlifter on the planet. I cannot wait to Same. see it. So excited to watch that. Bass, what's your plan with Thor's programming over the next five weeks? <laughs> so it's pretty crazy, but he gets home this Wednesday uh, back in Iceland and we've discussed uh, whether or not he's going to get into the gym the first day that he gets back home. Uh, it's not going to be anything heavy. It's not like we're so hardcore that we, we beat him up straight away. Uh, it's just generally reintroducing his body. He does need a little bit of rest, even though um, he's feeling great. There's no injuries, which is best case scenario. Um, he still performed really, really amazingly, and that does take its toll on the body. So, we, so initially, we're going to give him a little uh, deload week, hey? Absolutely, we're going to start with the deload, which is what I recommend for everyone who comes out of competition. Mm-hmm. Don't come back and go. For you know, all guns blazing. Yeah. Um, you've got to give your body a rest. He's still human, uh, even though a lot of people think he's not. Uh, so we come in with a small deload, and then we're gradually going to relearn how to use the deadlift suit because that's really important. Uh, he's been doing uh, the rules for the elephant bar. The Arnold's is raw, so no deadlift. So even though the deadlift suit helps, it's a technique involved. So we're going to relearn that technique gradually. So his best deadlifting competition leading up to the Arnold's was 480 kilograms without a suit. And his body is already strong enough, so I don't need to bend his body up even more to be able to achieve the 501. I believe he's strong enough to achieve the 501, so it's now just conditioning his body how to peak on the day in five weeks' time. But it doesn't end there. (laughs) There's four more events. And those events, um, he's got to train for those as well. So what are they? What are they? Log, so log lifting, mm-hmm. log lifts, uh, frame, no, farmer's walks, dumbbell, uh, after stones, and yeah, that's, that's the five events. It was always You're amazing, amazing at all of those events. Yeah, so, so um, those are the events for WS. Um, those are the five events. He's very much ready to compete now. So the next five weeks isn't necessarily about beating his body up too much. It's just about relearning the skills of the new event. Uh, And he's strong enough to step into competition right now. So the next uh, few weeks of training is is going to be pretty easy, I'd say. So what are your goals moving forward, Thor? Obviously, WUS, that's 501, is a massive goal. Yes. World's Ultimate Strongman, the 501, Children of Deadlift, those, you know, winning the title, the World's Ultimate Strongman is, you know, I want to say goal number two. The 501 right now is goal number one. That's, that's a goal number one. It's a good goal. Um, these two are my main goals right now. And then later on in the year, I have uh, coming up World's Ultimate Man. Um, I'd be lying if I would be sitting here saying that that's not my goal to win that again. Yes. Um, and then just like, I don't know, like getting better overall as an athlete and as a person. Yeah, you're an amazing person and an amazing athlete and you never cease to stop amazing the world with your talent. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. 
Um, okay, so we're just going to rewind a little bit and go all the way back to when we first met. We've spoken about this on our side, the, for our side of the story a million times to our audience, but we'd love to hear your side of the story about how we met or how you met Bass. All right, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know, a very um, remember moment for me. I was in Australia, Sydney, uh, filming for SodaStream, and they want to promote their brand more, so they want to reach out to influencers. Um, they were talking about these uh, super hot chicks, big, <laughs> bossy, big, so, so guy there, super good coach, you know, Sebastian Erb. Who's that guy? <laughs> okay. And he wants to he wants to hold the stamina with you there, you know, in, in, in his in his gym. He bypassed the hot chicks and went straight to the club. I was like, I was like oh. so anyway, long, long story short, I come up, we do the seminar, Bass uh, impresses me she, like just the way he talks, the way he coaches and, and teaches the movements of the lifts, you know. I was actually able to do a PR that day in bench press. And I was just impressed. I was just like, wow, this guy here can actually improve my static strength a lot. And I, I honestly believed that. I was just like, you know, if I want to improve my game, like I'm already here, like I've been like, a, like I'm this close to winning the World Series. I'm this close to winning the, the biggest shows. Like I just believe like if I'm, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be the best, I need to up my game. I need to get myself a coach that I believe in. So while all this was happening, you know, you were just talking, I was just sitting there impressing, oh, wow, this guy's just sexually talking. <laughs> <laughs> while, while, while you were just talking and just like, the more impressed I got, I just, just decided to talk. I'm just gonna ask the guy, you want to put coats? That was and the best day. I remember hold on. so clearly, I was crying. I was just so happy for Bass, like, how did you feel, Bass? Well, I, I, not in a million years would I believe that would happen. No so way. When he told me, the other one didn't even told me that he was coming in. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, because they didn't come to me. So the stream came to the girls with yeah. the influence, not the, the pleb guy, both had the flipping weight. Um, so I said to you, get me in that room because I just wanted to meet this guy not because of Mountain from Game of Thrones, but because I knew he was the strongest man on the planet and he was a beast. And it's like, I want to meet this guy. Get me in there. Yeah. And then for him to ask him to be his coach, it was just no way in a million years. It was like and a remember, dream. Yeah, well, it wasn't a dream. It was just bullshit. It wasn't even <laughs> close to enter a dream. And when he asked me, I just thought, okay, how do you do this? Like, I still need to sell myself even though – I was sold, like he asked me to be his coach. And I thought, you know what, fuck this. I'm not going to bullshit and pretend that, oh, I'll we'll see if I have time. I'll see if I have a vision. <laughs> I said, you know what, I have thought, man. Like this is the best opportunity in my career ever. And I'll do anything to, to, to take that role, man. And look and where we are. And he said, would you travel overseas? And I'm like, yes, like, yes. <laughs> and I was it. That was the telling point for me. I was like, okay, he's actually willing to put in the work. He's willing to coach me and like travel the world, be there by my side. So I was like, yeah. But was, who we would ready. have never have thought that we would be here like straight away as soon as you asked him. I think it was in June 2016. You were like, okay, first competition, come to the UK. And then you flew over there. Now we spend like oh, a couple of months uh, – you know, two to three months of the year traveling for you and with you. And it's amazing. And We never would have thought that our life would have become this, but now we're like all friends and family and it's just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely been a huge life changer for me. And a lot of people talk about it with success that you have to plan. Uh, and that's the funny thing with me. I would have never have planned for this in a million years. You couldn't. Uh, so it's completely unexpected, completely unplanned for. And, and what a complete change of lifestyle that we've all had. Uh, like you said, you know, a few months of every year, since 2016, we've been traveling. Uh, you know, the main place that we've traveled to is Iceland. You know, I hang out here and, and I'm so happy. I've, I've left my family at home, but I've come over here to my Icelandic family and I just see everyone that I've just 
love and know for, for the years that we've just been able to spend so much time with. And it's such a nice trip to see my Icelandic family. I just love it. I and know, you feel like at I home. Said, I do feel at home with these guys. And uh, it's just something that I would never have planned for in a million years. And yeah, I couldn't be happier that it, it actually happened. Yeah, no, it's, it's awesome. an amazing experience. As always, though, we're so grateful for the opportunities you've given us over the years and we've just had so much fun along the way. We just need to get you back here. Yeah. Thor, it's been way too long. Like four years later, he still hasn't come over here. The last time I went to Sydney, Australia, was when I saw you. That's it. That's right. That's crazy. I yeah. know. What's it going to take to get you back here? Those <laughs> those business class, first class seats aren't even big enough for you. You know what, guys? Now she has been talking a lot about vacation. I know. I'm Where trying to get her to come here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it is it is far and it's hard. Quiet. It's hard. Even in a business, like I've seen this guy curled up in a business uh, <laughs> class seat and Big enough for it. it like, it's not. To be on that flight, it's like a whole day in the air. It's over 24 hours in the air in a little seat like that. I do understand, but I do understand that we're going to get you back there soon, man. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. You know we will always come to you, Thor. You're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Thor, we have another question for you. Let's talk about the mindset of a champion. Can you share with us what goes through your mind before stepping on the world stage to compete? Before I compete, it's everything that happens before, you know. I, um, you know, I'm so obsessed with, you know, perfection, making sure everything is dialed in, making sure I eat my six meals a day, making making sure that, you know, I do my recovery work, get my training, training in, you know. The, the easiest part is actually the training. Uh, it's actually funny to say that, but that's the easiest part. But, you know, my mindset works like that. The more I win, the, the better I get, the, 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 the more folks I get. I don't know, it's hard to describe, you know. It's just like, for me, I don't think you can teach people to be inspired to Work hard. become successful. Either, either you are that type of person or not. I'm a very driven person. As an athlete, you know, I love working hard. I love being focused, consistent, and, and that's just the way I am, you know. From my perspective, um, when it comes to mindset of a champion, I know, because I'm an educator as well, I hold seminars, and I know that it's a really important topic for a lot of people. A lot of people need to work on their own mindset, and I know that whenever I talk about the topic of mindset, people love to listen to it. But even though I've been in the presence of literally the best in the world, uh, it's something that I also need to get my head around as well because I'm an athlete at a pretty high level, definitely not as high as yours. And I know that self-doubt comes into it a lot. Um, and I, I've learned a lot from, from working with you, but I still, like you said, you've either got it or you don't. Mm. And I know that there's a quality that you have that I'm continually trying to, that I look up to a lot. Um, and that is your self-belief. Uh, a lot of the things that you do, like I've spent a whole day eating with you and you said to me after that, are you going to continue eating like this? And I said, no, I can't keep this up. And you said, do you think you'd be stronger if you did? And I said, of course I would. It's like, well, why don't you do it? And, and that's part of it. The dedication that is involved in being a champion, uh, you know, being willing to put in the work, it's like, that's a, that's a smack in the face for me. It's like, Dan, you're a lazy bastard. You're just not willing to put in the effort that it takes to be the champion. Well, compared and to Thor, we, like everyone seems like well, lazy or not. Thor, I always say you are literally the hardest worker I've ever seen. Like what you just do not complain. Not you'll, a, you'll never miss a session. It's not just in the gym. Like you said, the gym is where the easy work is done. Mm. And we see it, the sleep, the recovery, the, the nutrition, mm. uh, you know, the, the commitment to greatness involves, you know, saying no to going out and partying and doing all of those things that a lot of young guys and girls would love to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the dedication is, is a huge factor to the mindset. And, and like you said, you either got it or you don't. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. It's, um, it's something that you just learn from a young age and then you just build it and get better and better as an as an, as an athlete, I guess, you know, probably what I use mostly as a, mo as, as a motivation is, you know, 
every single day I think about my comparative. I think I'm doing this and I bet they're not doing this. So I'm going to do more of this. I'm going to, I'm going to do 1% that they will not do. I'm going to make sure that I go to bed before they do. I'm going to make sure that I get my eight hours sleep every single night. I'm going to make sure that I eat my six meals every single day. I'm going to make sure that I train uh, smarter uh, and better than them. And I'm going to make sure that, you know, I really just dial in. You know, I get my grass uh, uh, on, you know, for those that, you know, know me, know that I like grass It's not like a massage. It's like a... What you like say? Scraping. It's like scraping, you know. It forces the blood to the area, and, and for me, it works very well. It, it helps my body to stay injury free. Um, Hot cold. You know, I do all these things, and I'm always trying to find find a ways to get even better. I'm always trying to find like I'm always trying to find that lit, like small ads. I even I even sometimes change my diet a tiny bit. For example, for this trap, I start to eat. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a huge believer in good nutrition, uh, a well-balanced uh, diet. I follow the word from diet, um, but I, 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 I decided to um, add in one to two tomatoes every single morning in this preparation, white tomatoes, and I decided to add uh, one banana. And this is just like a small the detail to add thing. in, small detail to add into my diet, you know, why? Because I'm thinking about the nutrition fact that comes from those fruits or whatever I'm eating. I'm, I'm, I'm just so so big, big, big believer in you know if I if, if I just get a little bit more of that nutrition, I'll I'll, I'll get maybe one or two percent more stronger. So I'm going to do that. I so love I your attention attention to detail, Thor. That's amazing. Something I guess it's a really great take home point for the people that are listening uh, is the change, the evolution of the highest level of athleticism in the world. Gone are the days where it's all about working harder. Obviously, we know we have to work hard to an extent, but some of the words that we're listening to have to talk about is working smarter. Mm -hmm. You know, there's back in the days we heard guys like Mike Tyson uh, talk about. Uh, if his competitors are waking up at six or at five, he's going to wake up an hour earlier. We're not talking about that. We're talking about making sure he's getting the eight hours of sleep. So it's not always just about working harder. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger, while we're here at the, Ar- the Arnold's, I'll talk about him. Uh, it's a pretty funny quote. He talks about if you want to sleep more or if you think you need more sleep, sleep faster or something like that. It's all along the lines of uh, the success tips of the olden days uh, of, of work more, rest less, uh, to be better, and and actually, that's not actually how it is. So it's something that we know in the flesh from the current strongest man in the planet. Uh, it's not just about beating yourself to the ground. Uh, he works as hard as anyone that I know, but he's very intelligent with his approach. Uh, recovery, nutrition plays a huge factor. As he said, the training is the easy part, um, and I can see it firsthand. To be able to eat the way that he eats, it's a full-time job. Uh, to be able to think about your recovery and all of these things. It's food for thought for the people out there that think it's just about working your butt off to achieve the greatness that someone like Hathor has achieved. It's amazing. Insane. Okay, Kelsey and Thor, we just want to ask you guys a few couples questions. Are you ready? How tall are you both? I'm 6'9", 205 centimetres. Whoa. And I'm five foot two, and I have no idea what that is in centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. I think it's like one fifty six because we're us. the same. We're five Kelsey's two. like similar height to us. Okay. Okay. What shoe size do you both have? Um, sixteen USA, <laughs> and that's like fifteen and a half in, in uh, Europe. It's yeah. crazy. And I'm that's insane. <laughs> and you're a six. Kelsey's a six Are like you a us. Six like us. <laughs> They're like tiny little shoes. Who's got the biggest shoe collection? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's hard. Answer. I don't know. He, I probably me because he just got rid of a bunch of shoes. So, so you've got me. more, right? But thoughts take up the most space. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Who spoons who more in bed? One hundred percent. I'm the big spoon. <laughs> so I'm you spoon him. So that means so you're like, like, this like this. <laughs> or like, <laughs> or that way. So you spoon him. <laughs> Leg over his big hips. <laughs> Wow. Okay. One more. I know the answer for this one. Who's grumpier in the morning? 
Yes. <laughs> Kelsey is the worst. We've stayed with you guys. She's the worst in the morning. She hates being woken up. And Thor, you're like the happiest person in the morning. <laughs> I'm so happy in the morning. I know. Yeah, you're I'm the so best. Good. You are. Uh, yeah, good. Okay. On wow. that note, it's bedtime for you guys. We need to wrap this up. Thank you so much for chatting with us. It's been an absolute blast as always. We can't wait to be back all together soon at World's Strongest Man in Florida. We can't wait to see you all. And now, Sebastian, you can come home now. We miss you. <laughs> I'll be home. I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow, but because Australia is the furthest away from every country, it's going to be the day after that. Yeah. So I'll see you today. Yay. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. We love you. Mwah. Keep up the great work. And for those Mwah. listening, the Back to Base podcast, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.